Good morning, Covenant. Glad to be with you here this morning. I want to begin this uh, this morning with uh, Psalm 46, 1 and 2. This is, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear, even if earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. And boy, that's a word we need as we uh, continue to... Uh, walk through this uh, season of COVID as, as we uh, have, have come through the, a week of transition in our government. And we just need to remember that it is God who is our refuge and strength and that all things are in Him. So a couple quick announcements as we get uh, started here this morning that uh, uh, remember the, the four things of uh, daily discipleship that we, as we went through the book of Acts over the last year or two, and uh, one of the things is being devoted to the Word of God. And this week, um, look at uh, John chapter 19, verses 9 and 10. And remember that it's quality over quantity, right? And also some application this week, and you'll see this later after the, the message, but uh, uh, something to chew on this week uh, for application is Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. And you'll understand that more at the end of the message. But I call it, myself, I call it reading the red. Um, in, in one of my translations, the words of Jesus are, are in red lettering. And um, of course, Matthew's gospel in chapters 5, 6, and 7 it's Jesus at the beginning of his teaching, and, it, and it's, it's a message to us. So read it from the perspective of like Jesus is speaking to you directly. Read it from that perspective. And of course, uh, uh, prayer, uh, fervent prayer, it needs to be at the for, uh, forefront of every day, right? And uh, so Psalm 46, 1 and 2 that I just read to you is our, is our prayer focus this week that God is our refuge and strength in all things. And then, of course, fellowship. Remember to, uh, uh, to look at, uh, to, to call one another. And a couple questions for you for the week are, what does it look like to walk in God's grace? And am I allowing the God of grace to deal with me personally? And the, these questions will make even more sense as we go through the message later here. But also, Valentine's Day service project. In years past, we visited a couple nursing homes on the fourth Sunday during church. So to spread the love this year, we would like you to make homemade Valentines to be dropped off at the nursing homes. You can use cardstock or construction paper, Bible verses, coloring pages, stickers, your own cre creativity to make them. Make as many as you wish. The more you make, the better. Make them with love. And turn your cards, pictures, whatever you make there, in by February 5th. You can bring them to the church, put them in the children's ministry box in the office, or mail them to the church, at the, and the address is, is, uh, is on the screen there. So next we've got the Wednesday night Bible study. And it's not just the Bible study for adults. We do have that. Pastor Sean's going through the book of Ephesians right now. But also there's Bible quizzing on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Our youth, the junior high, they're meeting via Zoom at 645. The senior high is meeting by Zoom at 8 o'clock. So don't forget that on Wednesday. Also, uh, remember as part of, part of our fervent prayer, uh, the ten two prayer every day. It, it sets your alarm on your phone. I've done this, so it, at ten o two, my phone goes off. I love this. I, I, I'll, I'll be in the middle of work, and boom, my, my phone goes off. And I might just be driving down the road. I might be in the middle of something. I can just pause. Remember, okay, I need to pray. What's going on in our world right now? Just, you know, one of those quick, quick prayers, pray for revival for our nation, for ourselves. So add that uh, little 1002 
uh, to your phone. And then lastly, of course, our, our ties. And even though we're not meeting here together, uh, the, the church and in, in, uh, how we function it still, still needs to move forward. So if you would remember to, to give, uh, we appreciate that. And of course, we have the Tithely app, and you can uh, check that out also. If you have questions on that, you can call the church office, and they'll help uh, walk you through that if, if, if you don't understand it. So... All right, with that, we'll turn to the message here, and I want to open with a word of prayer on that. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace upon us each and every day. Jesus, I thank you for your obedience to the Father in all things, that in you we see the Father in all things, And that in you, you give us the Holy Spirit that we may be able to act out and move forward in your spirit, in your understanding of all things. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We invite you here today. Send your Holy Spirit to be our teacher, to guide us into all truths, Lord God, and direct us in your ways. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last week, the question was given, do I desire to know God and His nature? We talked about, i got something in my eye, I apologize. We talked about what that looked like in in the life of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, right? Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as, as we most... We know them as, but we talked what this looked like, that those who know God do great things for God, have great thoughts of God, show great boldness for God, and are content and satisfied. So, we concluded that we must turn our knowledge about God into knowledge of God. Knowing God. So the, 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 the message title for the last week and this week have been seeing things as they are. But it's also about knowing God and God knowing us. Because He's the one that created us. We are His idea. He is not our idea. And in order for us to uh, see things as they are, and with, with, in, through the right lenses, we have to look through the right lens. And that's only through the one who's created all things, God himself. So, what does it look like to know God and to be known by him? So, Because, we talked about last week, the main reason for us being here is just that, is to know Him and to be known by Him, It's which is talking about a relationship. That's what it's about. It's about a relationship. So often, we go to God for answers, right? And what I'm talking about here today isn't about getting to know God so that you've got all the right answers. God invites you not to give you all the right answers. He invites you because He wants a relationship with you. And in right relationship with Him, then you know Him and you know what His answers are. And you can get to the, to the right answers. But we, we approach so much of life, and we, we approach so much of our study of God and of the Word of God, we go to Him looking for an answer, and He says, I want you. It's about a relationship. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24, It says, this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man gloat in his wisdom, the mighty man in his might, 
or the rich man in his riches. Let them boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who is just and righteous, whose love is unfailing, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. Folks, that is something we need to know, to see things as they are. Are we going to God with the right type of attitude? It doesn't matter how rich we are, how poor we are, how strong we are, how weak we are. None of those factors matter. Jesus says, come to me. I invite you to know someone or to have a deep understanding of who they are is actually dependent upon them. And this is what I mean by that. I met my wife, right? And we began to learn to know about one another. And we, we got to know one another enough that we decided, okay, we want to spend the rest of our lives together. <laughs> and it's been over 25 years now. We're still getting to know who one another are. If you ask me if I know my wife, Oh yes, I know, and I can tell you deep things about my wife. <laughs> but are there still things about my wife that I don't know? Yes. So really getting to know someone actually is dependent upon that, that one sharing their life and what they want you to know about them with you. And it's, it's in the same context that we learn to know who God is. For He does, He's all-knowing, right? He does know who we are. <clears throat> but for us to see things as they are, if He's the one that made us, even ourselves, how do I find out who I am? It's in Him that I find who I am. And it's in my relationship. Not just going to Him for answers, but going to Him out of relationship. That's the draw. It's a draw of relationship. I know only what they allow me to know about them. God has revealed to us all that He wants us to know about Himself, of whom... <laughs> We're made in His image, right? We've been made in His image. But also, Jesus Christ is the revealer of God Himself. If you want to know who God is, you get to know Jesus Christ Himself. And these are the words of Jesus. Remember, I, I love this scene. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 11 if you have your Bibles handy with you, which you're at home, there's no excuse for you not to have your Bible with you. <clears throat> but in John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking to His disciples. And this is, he, this is His in-depth teaching now. He's really, they, they've gone away from the crowds. This is Jesus and the disciples this is him sharing even more of himself, the second person of the Godhead, right? Second person of the Trinity, explaining to them who God is, who he is in, in their relationship. And he says, listen, don't be troubled. You trust God. Now trust me. There are many rooms in my father's home. I'm going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, I'd tell you plainly, when everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know where I'm going and how to get there. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We, we don't have any idea where you're going, so how can, we, how can we know the way? And of course, here's 
the, the beautiful line that Jesus says. So here, you want to see things as they are? Know this. G- Jesus is revealing uh, uh, who God is to us, and in, in especially in the person of Jesus. Jesus says, this is who I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you've known who I am, then you would have known who my Father is. From now on, you know Him and have seen Him. Jesus is explaining to the disciples as as they try to wrap their hands around, we we want to know God. We want to know Him deeply. We want that relationship. Everything you're talking about... We want to know how to get to Him. And Jesus said, Me. You get to God through Me. er, When you see Me, er, my attitude, my demeanor, everything I speak, everything that I have ever done is an exact representation of God the Father. Of course, Philip like every one of us, said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. So they still didn't get it, right? I I love the disciples because they they are me, right? I'm as hard-headed as as they are. I don't get it. (laughs) And, And here's Philip saying, I don't get it. Show us the Father, and then we'll see. He, he's not explaining what Jesus is trying to say. So Jesus further explains it to him here. Jesus replies, Philip, don't you even know who I am? Even after all the time I've been with you? Listen, that'll punch you right in the gut. How, much time, how many of us have been Christians for years upon years. They had been with Jesus for three years at this point, approximately. year and a half to three years. Uh, somewhere in that window. They had been with Him on pretty much a daily basis. Right? Well, how many of us have had Bibles and, and been in church? Oh, I'm, I'm 52 years old. I, I have been in church and been read the Scriptures and know all, you know, all the stories for 52 years, and there are still things that I am wrestling and and lacking in understanding. And it's not God's fault, it's my fault. Because I'm not seeing things as they are. And the reason is because I don't enter the relationship. I go to God looking for an answer, and He's been inviting me into relationship. There's sometimes I get that and it's all good, but most of the time I just want an answer so that I can go give an answer to somebody else and so I can be right. Huh. It's not about being right. Although you are right when you are in right relationship with Jesus, and that's what he's explaining to Philip. You've been with me all this time, Philip, even after all this time that I've been with you. He says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, so why are you asking me to see Him? Look at me. I represent Him. Everything that you've seen me do is what the Father is and is doing. He says, from now on, uh, I'm sorry, verse 11, just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of what you have seen me do. He's inviting us in. The invitation is, it wasn't just for his disciples. This word from Jesus is for each and every one of us. And of course, as you go further into that passage of Scripture, that's when Jesus begins to explain to them, "Ah, but oh, by the way... (laughs) And, and I can see them saying, oh, okay, I get this. Everything Jesus is represents God the Father. So pff, it's like it's God, God with us. God's with us. Okay, we got that. And then Jesus says, yeah, but I'm not going to be with you much longer. 
But I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a whole other message. That's a whole other topic. I'm not going to go there. But everything about Jesus represents the Father. That's why it is so important that we, we pray in the name of Jesus. That, that, and, and that the name of Jesus that we speak in the name of Jesus. What was it that the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted the, the disciples to quit speaking about when they arrested them? The name of Jesus. Because Jesus is the absolute representation of God the Father. And remember, the Pharisees and the Sadducees thought that they represented God as, as, those, as God's spokesmen. No, no, no. It was Jesus. We, they, they should have been, but if, if they truly would have... Jesus, he, he, told them, he told the Pharisees and the Sadducees this, right? He said, if you knew God, you would know me. You would have recognized me. Because all of God's Word in the Old Testament, it spoke of me. It spoke of my coming. It spoke of this day. But you don't believe it. You, you only believe what you want answers to give to somebody. God wants a relationship. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the way to know God. So this is why, in, in, for the readings for this week, I, I challenge you to go to Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, and read the red, read the words of Jesus. Like it's you and him. Get alone. Read those words. All right. This is this. I'm, I'm having a personal conversation with Jesus. So read them from from that perspective, in that context. So we come to this place, and you say, "Well, I know these things." I, I, I and and listen. I know. I'm not telling you something you've not already heard. But if you're anything like me, we're 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 very forgetful. But listen. Again, Jesus invites us, God invites us into relationship with Him, and that takes work. We, all, I, we want the easier, well, just give me this formula and, and, and I can do it. We want this, this, this cut and dry formula, this, this paste it, you know, uh, just, so the, the computer, right, you can click on this and, and, and highlight it and then and paste it and then go back and get it. And, you know, we, we want that easy, quick stuff, right? But relationships, knowing someone, being in relationship, it's not cut and paste, folks. It takes hard work. It takes effort. To truly know someone and be known by them takes so much work and it takes persistence, right? Listen to Paul's direction to the, to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I am going to read this. Last week I, I didn't uh, cover and read a whole lot of Scripture, but this week we're covering some more Scripture because these... this. This is the teaching. And it, so Paul, as he writes this letter to the church, he, he's, he's torn because he's like, look, you guys ought to be further in your relationship with God than you are. You're like a bunch of kids arguing in that. And so he, he, in chapter 3 here, he writes, he says, Dear brothers and sisters, he says, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to mature Christians. And boy, I, I tell you, I, I've got to take heed of that myself. I'm like, can, can God speak to me from a place of, am, am I mature enough to hear God that when He speaks, I'll trust Him and I'm going to act on what He tells me? Or... Am I like that? One of my kids, he would, for the most part, he did everything I told him to do. But, there, but it seemed like there was always an attitude to it. You would speak what you wanted them to do, and it was like, 
Well, first of all, because it, it took them out of what they, they wanted to do, right? But there was always this, <clears throat> oh, why, why do I have to do, you know, they eventually did it. But so, it, how, how mature am I? When the Word of God comes to me, does, does it penetrate? Do I receive it that it's as, as part of relationship in, in a... In, and God's, God's giving me this or, or calling me out of something to, to grow me in relationship and, and it's for, for my good? Do I trust Him for that? Am I mature? Well, Paul's talking to the church of, of that day at, at Corinth and he's saying, you are a bunch of babies. He says, I had to talk to you, though you, belong, as, you belong to, as though you belong to this world and like you were a bunch of little infants in the Christian life. I had to feed you with milk and not solid food because you couldn't handle anything stronger. Are you, and you still aren't ready, he says. For you are still controlled by your own sinful desires. And listen, I've got to say, that's the church today. Well, uh, and, and we, 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 we blame it on the Democrats, and we, re, we blame it on the Republicans, or, 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 or a liberal, or, or, or a conservative, and, and we, we throw all these titles out there, and, and we're arguing amongst one another. In the body of Christ, not, and it looks no different than the outside world. And that's what Paul's talking about there. Listen, folks, there is nothing new under the sun. Doesn't that prove that you are controlled by your own desires? You're acting like people who don't belong to the Lord. When, when one of you says, I'm a follower of Paul, and another says, no, I prefer Apollos, aren't you acting like those who aren't Christians? Oh, no, I go to this church. No, I go to that church. We, we tend to put... Uh, pastors in churches and denominations or whatever it is, we, we put them up on these pedestals. And Paul's like, no, don't put us up on a pedestal. Whether you, whether you follow my teaching or Paulus's teaching, and he, and, he, and he clarifies this. I love this clarification here. He's like, who is Apollos and who's Paul that we should be the cause of such quarrels? Whatever denomination, whatever pastor you're following, why are you making them part of a quarrel here? He says, through us, God caused you to believe. He said, so he acknowledges, yes, God uses men. Yes, men are God's plan, God's, God's idea. Yes, God does use men. But men aren't God. And that's his point here. Through us, God caused you to believe. Yes, each of us did the work the Lord gave us. Paul's like, we, we did what we were called to do. My job was to plant the seed in your hearts, the evangelist, right? Paul came and he, and he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, but then Apollos, Apollos watered it. Paul was the evangelist. He came, he shared the gospel, and he, and, and he left. Apollos, well, he was the everyday pastor. He was there. He was, he was their minister. He was ministering to them. He, he says, I planted the seed. Paul watered it. But ultimately, it was God, not neither one of us, who made it grow. Pastor Nate, Pastor Sean, myself, other teachers in the, uh, the, 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 uh, the youth leaders, the, the children's church leaders, they all have a role, and God uses them. But it's not them that, that, we, that we worship. I forgot, well, I didn't turn my alarms off, and guess what? That was, uh, uh, that was my, I am taping this the day before, that was my 10.02 uh, to call to prayer. So at that, I'm going to pause right here, and that's what we're going to do. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace upon us in all things. And Lord, guard our hearts from, from placing, whether it be a pastor or some other leader, up on these pedestals. 
Yes, we recognize that God is using them and uses men greatly, Lord God. But help us to see that ultimately you, you do uh, use men and women, but you use them to draw all men to yourself. And we thank you for that. So Lord, just continue to guide us and direct us in all of your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That, that was a great pause right there, right? <laughs> great pause. So, at, Paul, it, Paul continues on here, and he says, you know, who, who are we? We do the watering, but it's God who causes the growth. The, the one who plants and the one who waters works as a team with the same purpose. Folks, we've got to work together. Yet, yet listen, the world's calling for unity, Right? But there's a difference in the unity that the world calls us to and that the unity that Jesus Christ calls us to. The unity that He calls us to is to Himself. We work together as partners who belong to God. You are God's field, God's building, not ours. Paul was like, it, it's, it's not about me. It's not about Apollos. It's not about covenant. It's, it's about the body of Christ and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and pointing people to that personal relationship of knowing God so that we ourselves can not only know, how, uh, know things and, and why things are, but so that they can be in relationship with Jesus. I want to uh, jump to the end here. Um, verse 18 it says, stop fooling yourselves if you think you are wise by this world's standards. You will have to become a fool so you can be wise by God's standards. <laughs> God gives no account to how smart any or, or, or how dumb anybody is. God is on the throne. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. The scriptures say, so here's another uh, word from God of who He is and who we are in comparison to Him. He said, God catches those who think they are wise in their own cleverness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they're worthless. So, don't take pride in following a particular leader. Everything belongs to you. Paul and Apollos and Peter, the whole world in life and death, the present and the future. Everything belongs to you. You belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. You see that order? We belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. It's all in this relationship. To know God, one must allow God to deal with them. And that's what God does. That's what He's doing here through this passage in 1 Corinthians 3. God's dealing with us, right? God, when, when I uh, correct my kids, or, or even when I'm just speaking to them, trying to teach them something, I, 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 and dealing with them, it's not to, to harm them. It is always to be in relationship with me. To, and because in, in knowing uh, what's good and what's bad for them, to teach them those right things. That's what relationship is and that's what it does. So to know God, we must allow ourselves to be dealt with. And we will allow that to certain degrees. But the reason we're not where we ought to be most of the time is because it's not because that God's not taken us there or made a way for us to be what He's created us to be. It's usually because we won't allow Him to deal with that area in our life. And listen, that's part of the sanctification. As we 
come to know God, and He, us, He stirs our hearts in the things that we thought were so important at one time. As we see Him, we see what we thought was so important at one time it with through the right lens, and we see, oh, it's not as important as I thought it was to uh, my identity or in who I am. Because God has told me this. I thought I had to look like this or act like that. Or... So we have to allow God to deal with us. And as He reveals Himself to us, we must allow what He says about Himself and us to penetrate our heart. Secondly, we must not only allow Him to deal with us, but we must take, it, it, in order for that to take place, it takes personal involvement. You've you got to get real, right? In order for my wife and I, we, we, we first began to talk with one another, right? And, and get to know one another. But eventually, it took real commitment, real personal involvement, real vulnerability for us to know one another to the extent that we do now. And it continues to allow, we, we still have to continue to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. And, and that comes as we build trust in knowing the other person and as they build that trust with us. And it's the same in our relationship with God. It listen. It's dealing with God and allowing God to deal with us. It's not impersonal. It is very personal. And it, it, it can get very emotional. Emotions come out of it. Now, granted, it's, we, we can take it to an extreme and turn things into emotionalism. But we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? We, we can't throw that that there's not emotions. God's the one that made us, and He made us with emotions. God Himself had emotions, has emotions, right? What does it say when, when Lazarus died? Jesus wept. What do you call that? That's an emotion, right? We weep, we cry, we laugh. There's real emotions involved in a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Will you allow Him to deal with you? And will you allow the emotions that come with that relationship to come out too? It's okay. But also, listen, it's also okay. Some people are, you know, some people are criers. Some people aren't. You know, so you can't look at someone else's experience and compare it to yourself. Don't do that comparison game. It's, it's about you and God, and however those emotions come out with you and Him, allow that to come out and be okay with that. And be okay that it doesn't look like so-and-so's because you're not so-and-so. God made you uniquely, and He made you for Himself to be in that relationship with Him. As I've, I, I've shared before, I have four kids and a wife and parents. I have different relationships with each and every one of them. And each and every one of them know me differently and to different degrees, right? It's about relationship. Knowing, and here's really the most important factor. Knowing God is a matter of grace. It's God who is the initiator to the relationship. Knowing God isn't something that, as the world wants to say, oh, that's just that's a, that's somebody who's weak-minded and they just need to make up someone and, and make, make something up. No, we have been made in His image. We are His idea. So if we want to know how to truly move forward, how to see things as they are, 
We have to go to the one who created all things in the first place. And that's where it is, folks. We have to be in personal relationship with God, knowing Him. I am in deeper relationship with God than I was 25, 26 years ago when my wife and I were first married. I'm in deeper relationship with my wife also in that time. But am I where I need to be? No. I know that. I, can, I continue, no matter how long that you've been walking with, with the Lord, or if you haven't, and, and you're hearing the gospel for the first time, that, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But that John 3.16 happened, right? In that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus, in whom we've been talking about, that He died for each and every one of us. God gave us Jesus. God made a way back into relationship with us. We, we mess things up. But in Him, we can see things as they are. And we can do great things. We, we, can, we can believe for great things because we believe in Him. And we can be at peace. All these things come in knowing God. And, and, and it's always, there's always another level, another deeper place that we can take it to. So, that is my challenge to you this week. Get to know Him. Start in, start in Matthew uh, 5, 6, and 7. Read those words of red. Read Jesus' words. Jesus is, it's God's invitation to us. And it's not just if you do this, this that. It, it's not about laws. Listen, it's about relationship. I don't want to put laws on my kids, though we do. And, and, and there, there's contact, the law, the law's not bad in, it, in, in and of itself, but it's always about relationship. And that, that's great for parents, right? That, that I had to take a step back. Am, am, am I reprimanding my kid? And, and is the punishment that, uh, that, that I'm placing on them is it there to bring them back into relationship with whatever they did? You know, if, if they've harmed someone, spoke wrongly about someone, whatever it is. And, and mo- first and foremost, is it going to bring them back into relationship with Jesus? It, is, is that punishment drawing them back to Jesus? Not just there to punish Listen, when, when God disciplines us, it's never to harm us. It's to get us to that place where we'll say, whoa, I was wrong. I messed up here. I need to get back on track. And the only way to get back on track is through Jesus Christ. And in Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit that He sends us, we can walk in the Spirit of Jesus. that The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. And they are, the, they are part of the Godhead. They are God. And they represent God. And they, that's, that's how we become whole, folks. That's how we see things as they are in Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You for Your Word for your guidance, your direction, for, for, uh, for your discipline in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for those things and that you are the one who draws all men unto yourself. Lord, continue to draw all men unto yourself and continue to, to direct us that, that we would be bold, that we would uh, speak your truths, that, that we would point people to you, not to a church, not to a denomination, not, not to anything but to Jesus Christ and to him alone. Not to a pastor, but to Jesus Christ. May Jesus Christ be on the throne and that we would point people to you, Jesus, that, and that they would see 
through our lives, that that is how we get through life in the life that we are living, in the troubles and the turmoils that we are living in. Because yes, we do live in this world, but your call is for us not to be of the world as we live in the world. We are of our Heavenly Father, who through the Son brought us back into relationship with Him, and through the power of the Holy Spirit helps us to walk in that relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen.